My name is Kristen. I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario, but I relocated to the Northwest Territories almost four years ago. January will mark my fourth year, which is crazy because time has really flown by. And I really came here with this mentality that I'd be here for for one year, and now it's turned into almost four. So uh, definitely been quite the experience. Definitely, I would say, like, growing up in Toronto, I was very much kind of a city girl. Like, I, um, at least by the time I was leaving to come to the North, um, I used to have a lifestyle blog, and I would talk about beauty and fashion. So I can definitely tell you that I did not expect that I'd be moving to the Northwest Territories, which is a subarctic anytime in my life. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd be visiting at some point. But anyways, you never know what life has in store for you. So it's been an interesting journey right now. And I'm just kind of going along with the ride. And um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about my journey and my adventures in the North and, and to speak with you today, Sarah. So thank you for having me on. Oh, fantastic. Let's go back to the city girl. So growing up in Toronto, did you have any siblings? You know, did you did you play sports? Did you manage to, to get outside? You know, was activity a part of your life? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So yeah, I have siblings. I have a sister and I have two brothers. You know, it's so interesting because now the outdoors is a big part of my life. But growing up, it really wasn't. I should note that I'm a black woman. And I do think that was kind of a reason why, not that like my parents were like, oh, you're you're a black woman, you shouldn't be outdoors. But I think there's just like such an underrepresentation of people of color in outdoor spaces and recreation activities. So it was never a part of my life, like the idea of going camping or going hiking or doing like water activities and sports. Like my parents, it never mentioned it. They never brought it up. And and really, like it just wasn't a part of our conversation at home. We did go on vacations, but it was never like, let's go on like this road trip to a, a national park or like, let's go and visit. Let's go like camping or something. So it just wasn't a part of my lifestyle at all. I guess I was more of like, I wouldn't necessarily say I was like super athletic, but I did run cross country and I did play a little bit of soccer here and there, but that was as far as it really got for me when it came to like outdoor sports. It's definitely, it was just um, something I just wasn't exposed to. And I think too, like living in a city made it harder for me to have access to things like that as well. Um, Or like, and I also just wouldn't even know where to begin, to be honest, because no one that I had in my circle of friends was doing those kind of things. And if they were, I just wasn't really like aware of what they were doing. Like, I'm sure, I think one of my friends has Um, her partner has a cabin, but, and that's kind of how she got into it a bit. But like, other than that, like, I didn't really have friends even doing things like that to be able to say like, let's go on a weekend and go like, you know, camp somewhere or hike somewhere. So very different lifestyle completely. And it's definitely a slower pace for sure. The thing is, is I think that like, even though I had been living in the city for a while and I do consider myself a city girl at heart, I think that I do like kind of like a laid back kind of lifestyle as well. I think that there was like, I don't mind the fast paced feeling of Toronto, but I do also like like the slower lifestyle and like being more present and in the moment. So I, I think like when I left Toronto, I was ready for change. I was looking to leave the the city, to be honest, because I wanted to try and live somewhere else. Um, I was looking for, I guess, like a new beginnings somewhere. And I did not at all think Yellowknife would be the place that I was going to have my new beginnings. But again, in life, you just never know what's going to happen. So I was applying for jobs all over the place. And I was at the time I was in the field of journalism. So I was looking for work everywhere, basically, in, um, in Canada, I should say. I guess like with journalism, you kind of have to like look around and I saw a job opportunity in Yellowknife and that's kind of what started this like whole, (laughs) the move to Yellowknife basically. And um, what's interesting is, is that I did get a job offer in Toronto the same time I got a job offer, a job offer in, in Yellowknife. But I knew that 
this was just going to be a really cool experience in general. And I thought like, you know what, if it doesn't work out, I can always leave, but like, I don't want to pass up on this opportunity to come up to the subarctic and to like gain some skills and to just get exposed to the North and, and to learn and have some adventure. So it just seemed like it was like a good move, but it wasn't at all like what I was thinking when I was looking for job opportunities, to be honest, but you know, it's interesting and it's really been a really cool experience so far. I mean, I'd love to go back to that why. So you talked about looking for a new beginning. Was that a reason why you wanted a change? Is that something you'd like to share more about? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to, I had never moved away from my home ever. Like I had been, I'd always lived in the same house for the most part, like for most of my childhood. And I never went away for school. I just, you know, would always commute back home after school. So I was commuting to school and coming back home and I just never went away. Like some, a lot of my friends went away and I didn't do that. And I was really comfortable with just being at home and I was really comfortable in the routine. And to be honest, if I wasn't in journalism, I don't know if I would have felt that I needed to even leave the city. I might've, I'm not sure, but because I was in journalism, a lot of my friends were like trying to get jobs in other places in different cities. And they were like open to that. I still wasn't that open. And then I think once I kind of realized like this is, it can be a good opportunity and that there are a lot of opportunities like outside of the city, I started to kind of like look elsewhere and be open to like opportunities. But yeah, like I had lived in Toronto for so long and I had felt like I wanted some like new experiences under my belt. I felt like everything was like the same old routine. And maybe I just like looking back, I probably could have tried to be outdoors, but I didn't really realize that like that was something I could do. Like now that I've left, I'm like, wow, Ontario has so many amazing trails and amazing like places to go and hike and camp. But at the time I wasn't in that mindset. I was more like, oh, I just want like something different, something like a new place to be. So I was looking for like new beginnings or like just to like have a new chapter and to try living somewhere else. Like I was really open to living a, like I guess outside of the city, I was really open to that or even living abroad if anything happens. So, but I do feel like because I'm so far away, like Canada is a really big country. And honestly, you don't realize how large of a country it is until you move to the Northwest territories, because I can tell you that it's like a seven hour flight, basically. Like it's like a full day of flying when you're flying from the North back to the city for the holidays or whatever. But that's just like, the minimum if of uh, so it's it's a long process and you really realize just like how vast and large the northwest territories is and how large canada is really so moving away like i live i feel like i live really far away from my family because the north is very far it's a very remote community it's cold right now it's quite dark it's very different from city life from what i was used to so, yeah, I mean, it's been definitely different um, and a very different experience, but I guess it's part of like my journey in life. And I'm kind of just like, I'm just kind of going with that flow, I guess. So you've been there for four years now at Yellowknife in the subarctic. Like I am starting to shiver already about <laughs> thinking like how cold it must get up there. I'd love for you to share, maybe take us back to when you initially sort of moved, you know, a new place, new job trying to find new friends, build a, a new community, you know, connect. What were the realities like after you had actually moved away? How did you go about getting yourself established, you know, making new friends and starting to build a life for yourself? Honestly, it was really, really tough. I'm not going to lie. And I don't, I probably didn't acknowledge it at the time because I think if I acknowledged it and thought about it and sat with it, I probably would have been like, let me get on the next plane and go back home. But it wasn't that easy for me. Like it was really tough finding housing to begin with. And like before I came here, it was just tough finding housing. There's a housing crisis in Canada, or like you can say in a lot of community, Northern communities and remote communities. So like we see that there's just not a lot of like adequate housing for people to live in and they're not suitable and they're not affordable. Like it was just expensive to begin, begin with. And then when you see prices that like, I was shocked that it was expensive for housing, to be honest, in the Northwest territories, I just thought like moving far away would mean that housing would be cheaper and more affordable, but it's actually really expensive. So that was a shock. And then just kind of being like, okay, what can I now like afford to live in and struggling to find a place and really just like 
trying to like settle in. And that was really a tough transition and like a, tr- a tough adjustment for me in the beginning. And then also I came here in January, which is like the dead of winter. It is really cold. I've now learned that it's like one of the worst times to move here because it's obviously cold. It's really dark. Like the thing is when I left, you have to keep in mind when I left Toronto, it was, I think the first week of January. So it was cold in Toronto too. You know, like it was, it was cold. So when I came here, I still kind of was like, I wasn't like freezing in the sense that I was like, Oh my God, it's so cold. Like I can really notice this big difference because I had come from a cold place to another cold place, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like completely like a shock to my system when I stepped off the plane, but I would say the darkness was like something that was really interesting. I didn't struggle with it mentally, but I just wasn't orientated enough. Like I couldn't figure out where I was because it was dark a lot of the time. So like I would go to work in the morning and I think I started to work around 830, but it doesn't get light. Like the sun doesn't come around until like 930. So or 930, 10, maybe. So I'd go to work in the dark. And then by the time I was done work, work would be it would be dark outside again. So I would like come back home in the dark. So I never really knew where I was. And I didn't know what the city looked like because when I came, like I just stayed inside and then I would go to work in the morning. So I just had no idea where I was. And I remember people trying to give me like directions to places and I would be getting lost and I'd be so confused because I had no idea what any, like where I was or what anything looked like. Like, I didn't even know what it looked where like the outside of the building that I looked like. Cause it was just um, that I lived in. I mean, because it was so dark, like I could, I could tell once I approached it, but like just familiarizing myself with everything was really tough because of the darkness. So one day my coworker took me out to lunch during the day. And that was when I finally got to see the city and I was like, wow, it's pretty, but like, it was like, you know, just realizing that like I maneuvered around in darkness for a while, that was a really challenging time for me. And I don't think I really like processed it until like later on that I was like, okay, that was tough. So there were a lot of like hiccups along the way. You know, it wasn't an easy transition. I wanted to like, just try and experience as much as I could. So I think I tried to have like a pretty positive mindset and like slowly things started working out for me. And like slowly I started getting more comfortable with things and getting a routine. And once I had that routine in place, I felt a lot better. And then you know, I became friends with like some of my colleagues and I met my own friends and there's quite an active social life in Yellowknife specifically where I live. So like we would go to restaurants often and we would, you know, socialize at each other's homes and, and it became nice. Like it was really like, you know, I, at that point became more comfortable and I felt better with things. And, and yes, it it definitely was cold. I wasn't at all engaging in outdoor activities. I won't lie. And at that point, the temperature was probably close to like minus 40. I don't know what that would be equivalent to for you guys, but it was pretty, pretty cold. So I think like, (laughs) I definitely, I would definitely say like, I was definitely trying to stay warm at that point too. And I I did see that difference in temperature and like just getting used to breathing in a different type of oxygen, which was different for me or a different type of air, I should say. It took me time. And I always say like, now I've been here for almost four years, but like, it hasn't always been the smoothest um, sailing for me. Like it's, it's not been like, so like straightforward for me, you know, like there's been ups and downs and like bumps along the way. So I don't want to ever like make people think like it was super easy. I just came here and everything worked out for me because it definitely took time for me to like really ease myself in and like find things and figure things out. But I definitely feel like the whole process has made me so much stronger and yeah, like I'm, I'm really happy with the things I've been able to accomplish while living in the North. Let's talk about the outdoors and outdoor activities and how you've been transitioning into the outdoor world. You know, tell us more about how that happened for you and what that experience was like. Like, as mentioned before, I'm not, I wasn't familiar with the outdoors. I wasn't exposed to it. And I think this might sound ironic for people to hear, but even though I lived, I live in the Northwest Territories where we're surrounded by nature and wilderness and everything like that. Not everyone here is like a big outdoors fan, right? So there are bars and and like restaurants and different things people do for like entertainment. So when I first moved here, I didn't at all get into the outdoors, to be honest. Uh, Most of my friends were just mainly into socializing by going to restaurants or going to each other's homes, watching movies. We were not at all thinking about hiking or anything like that. 
Plus it was also quite cold. So I don't think anyone was thinking about doing that, but it was one day, like later on, I think it was closer to the summer one where one of my friends invited me to go to go on a hike to see um, this waterfall called Cameron falls. And it's a really popular waterfall in um, Yellowknife. And she was like, yeah, we're going to go. Do you want to come? And I said, sure. And that was kind of like my first, like my first opportunity to get exposed to like hiking and going to a location for like to see like this beautiful uh, waterfall. I did that. I thought it was really beautiful. And then like time passed and I didn't really do anything outdoors again. And my friends were not really outdoorsy, but it was later on that I started to like get intrigued about the outdoors. And I started asking other people that I, I knew that might have a little bit more exposure to nature just because they had lived in Yellowknife longer. So I asked one of my friends, I said, hey, do you want to come with me camping? And she was like, sure. And then that's kind of when things started to really move, where we just started going camping. And then we went hiking. And then like I started asking more people. And mainly I was just asking people like, hey, can you do this with me? Hey, can we do this? And I just started really enjoying the outdoors. And that's where like my passion for outdoors uh, started because I was asking people to like take me along with them, bring me with them on their adventures and, you know, come with me and teach me what they know because I didn't know anything about the outdoors. I didn't know what gear I needed. I just was like not familiar with what like you needed to do for anything. And I think I felt a little bit overwhelmed. I don't know if I could have just done it on my own without like, I'm sure I could have, but at the time I was like, I need someone to like show me how to properly camp and just kind of give me like the ropes and teach me. So yeah, I brought a lot of people along with me along my journey. And that's when I started to also notice like the benefits of nature, like how, how healing nature was like, I would just feel so calm and like, I guess it would relieve a lot of stress I had. And then it was just one of those things where like, I I just thought, wow, like this is a beautiful thing. So yeah, I started to spend a lot of time outdoors and I started documenting my process and like my experiences in nature, especially as a black woman living in the subarctic. And that's kind of why I started my platform travel adventurers, because I wanted people to follow me on my journey. And I wanted to inspire people um, from the BIPOC. So black indigenous and people of color from that community. I wanted to also inspire them to like come outdoors and try something and like, you know, to feel inspired and to just, to see what life was like for me, basically. And, and, and yeah, like, and I continue to really want to like push people to come outdoors, but yeah, it's a big part of my life. Never expected that I'd be like this outdoorsy person. And that is something that I always want to do, but yeah, the North has really transformed my, my relationship with nature. And, you know, at the very beginning of our conversation, you talked about you know, especially when you were you growing up, like the the lack of representation, the lack of not seeing you know black women in the media, not having role models, especially in the camping and the hiking and the outdoor space. Who are your role models in the outdoors in this space at the moment? Who are the women that inspire you? That's such a great question because yeah, I had no like there was no representation. You know, I would watch wilderness shows and it was mainly just seeing white people on TV and just not feeling like it was a space for me. So I have to say a lot of the role models that I have today are my own friends that took me out, like my indigenous friends or some of my, uh, my friends that grew up um, like one of my friends, she's originally from Africa. She knew how to like camp and she had made a fire. Like she was very familiar with that stuff. So she was able to teach me a lot. And then, you know, I've had other friends like that, have like taken me out that are not people of color, but they've like guided me and shown me things. But a lot of the people that I would say, like the people of color that have brought me out and like taught me things, they're definitely like role models. And they're so inspiring to me because they really taught me a lot about, like they gave me like my first step and like my first taste of the outdoors. And so I've also like now started more work with promoting the diversity outdoors And um, on my platform, Amplify Outdoors, there's so many people from the outdoor community that are um, BIPOC. So they're Black or Indigenous or they are other people of color and they are outdoors and they're doing amazing things and they inspire me. So like I can't necessarily just pinpoint and say this is one person, but there are so many amazing people that um, I follow and that I see all the time and I get introduced to that are doing such amazing things outdoors. And like, it's crazy because you don't realize it. I had no idea until I got into this area myself 
And I thought, well, I'm going to show what it's like to live in the subarctic. And, and then that kind of exposed me to people. So we are outdoors, we are doing things, but we're just not at all like represented in media or anything like that. So these people inspire me and I'm hoping that our visibility online is going to transcend into like the visibility in advertising and marketing and to start to be seen more um, and to really encourage like people to come outdoors more from those communities and to like feel like they belong because I think a lot of the time we feel like we don't belong or that it's not a safe space or an inclusive space. So I think that all of those things, like I think that those people have really inspired me on my journey today. And yeah, like there's one more person I'll note and it's Matthew Henderson. And he was the first person to reach the the North Pole. And, you know, we don't really recognize that he's a black man and he never got credit for it. And I never knew about this until recently. It kind of shocked me, but I found out, I think like last year while I was doing research and um, it was just one of those things where I think just seeing someone that was like, that kind of looked like me also outdoors and like had been at the North Pole, it was just like amazing for me to experience, to, to see that and learn about him. And he's also an inspiration to me. I mean, it was a long time ago that he did this trek. But his story is, is not really well known. And I find him to be very inspiring. Well, that's incredible. I've never even heard of him. He's definitely somebody I want to check out and, and find about the um, find about sort of the story that's been hidden or erased or, or ignored. And I'd love for you to share more about your platform that you mentioned. So Amplify Outdoors, nature is for everyone. Talk to me more about what you're doing, how you're making it work, how you're getting your message out there. How are you amplifying? Oh, that was a good little segue. <laughs> how, are you, how are you amplifying the outdoors? Yeah, thank you. So I started um, an organization called Amplify Outdoors almost um, a year ago. So I guess I woke up one day and uh, I just... I knew that there was already underrepresentation of people of color in the outdoor spaces. And I just felt like I had to do something to kind of like address this issue. So yeah, like I decided to just kind of go guns blazing and just start Amplify Outdoors. And basically what we try to do is to promote and amplify diversity and representation in outdoor spaces and to just try to create like tools and resources for people to to like kind of learn more about what some of the barriers that we're facing outdoors and to just um, kind of create more awareness about what is happening in outdoor spaces. So there's a couple of things that Amplify Outdoors does. So if you were to go on like our Instagram account, you'll see that we have a community that we're building and it's growing very nicely and everyone's very supportive. And it's on there that I like really try to share information or try to have engagement and to highlight people from the BIPOC community. But then I also have merchandise that I sell that really tries to like further promote that and create more awareness. So we have the Trailblazer collection, which is essentially like a person of color on a t-shirt or a hoodie. And it's just this idea of seeing yourself and being able to see someone that looks like you in the outdoors. So it's kind of like trying to bring a uh, focus to the idea that there is a lot of underrepresentation of people of color in outdoor spaces. And like, we're trying to create that visibility and to try to like show um, that we belong outdoors and that we are outdoors. I should also know that although it is a person of color on, on the, the clothing, the clothing is for everyone. So, you know, we invite allies to support us and to wear it. It's, I kind of like to describe it as like a Barbie doll where like, you know, like we used to have like a lot of doll, like as a kid, I had a lot of dolls that were white and I just like never saw myself. And then finally my mom was able to find one that was black. And it wasn't that I stopped playing with like the white dolls. I just like now had more diverse dolls to play with, like a a more variety of dolls of different backgrounds. So yes, although it is a person of color on the the hoodie or the t-shirt, it's just about creating like awareness about our issue. It doesn't mean that like you can't wear it if you're not from the BIPOC community. It's just about highlighting and furthering our issue. And it's really beautifully uh, designed and, you know, a lot of thought was put into it. So that's something that we do. And what we do is we take 10% from um, our merchandise that are sold like from each piece. And we donate it back to an organization right now called Empowerment Squared. And it goes to their recreation and sport programming for marginalized and refugee youth. And I'm really hoping to work with more charities in the near future and kind of like help amplify their causes and help to like 
donate the uh, proceeds from our merchandise to, to them um and just to do more work like honestly we want to like hope that like we can start like maybe a scholarship or an award and like help to like fund gear and different things for people in the BIPOC community so we're really trying to like help to like amplify our causes and to kind of like really promote that the outdoors should be an inclusive and safe space for for everyone and we do like a little bit of like online activities right now we're doing this outdoors dance challenge and um people can feel free to tag us and it's just for us to show people outdoors dancing while they're in nature if they're camping hiking or they're engaging in an outdoor activity we want to like just see people out outdoors and we want to see the joy that it brings you so you know we encourage you to like just show us a, like a little snippet of you dancing for fun it's nothing you don't have to be like a skilled dancer or anything it's just a, a just a fun little video that we want to share with our community to show people what joy outdoors looks like and to kind of promote the idea that it's a beautiful and really happy place to be so those are like small little things we're doing and hoping to do some new some events in the new year to like maybe bring people outdoors on on hikes or to just kind of like try new outdoor activities. So there's a lot of things we're trying to work on right now and it's you know I think like covid has been a little bit uh difficult to work around but yeah I'm really trying to like get people outdoors to experience things and to have fun outside. And and lastly we also provide DEI and anti-racism consultation. So it's kind of multi-layered but definitely doing a lot of different things with Amplify. The community's been so supportive. I'm really excited and like I just look forward to continuing to grow this beautiful community and I'm just so grateful for all the support. I'd love to give to get your advice and top tips especially for black people, indigenous people, people of color who are maybe they've come from a city, you know, like you, a city background, maybe haven't been exposed or had the opportunity to get out into the outdoors. You know, what would your advice be? Well, I mean, I feel like it's so much more layered than that because I think it's really difficult. There's so many systemic barriers that make it so difficult for people from the BIPOC community to get outdoors. So I think we kind of have to acknowledge that like there are so many barriers, whether it's like the lack of transportation, because if you live in a city, maybe you don't have a vehicle. And so just being able to like travel to these destinations, which are really far and it can be like hard to get to. So I think that like there's so many barriers that we have to kind of acknowledge and like the fact that like people like the gear is really expensive and that there is racism that is and, and sexism and harassment that's experienced outdoors. So, I mean, I think it's daunting and really like nerve wracking for a lot of people to sometimes feel like they should even be able to be out there. But for those that are like able to access the outdoors and like want to do it and are curious, I would say that like to just start slow. Like, I don't think you need to jump in and like completely like just you know, go on this like long hike or something like that. I think that what you should do is just talk, start really slow and like try to find a trail that is like as close to you as possible. If that's something you're interested in trying out. Um, and that's not too difficult, you know, something that you'd be able to do. And, and a lot of the time people think that they need to have like hiking boots and like all this gear and stuff. And really like you can wear sneakers, like you can do a simple, you can walk a trail like in, without, as long as it, it depends on the terrain, but if it's like a simple hike, you can wear your sneakers and not have to worry about like investing in some really expensive hiking boots. So I think that people should just use what they have to begin with. Like the knapsack that I use on my hike still is like very old school, like it's like a school bag. It's not like a nice outdoor bag, you know, like a backpack that you see people carry. I just use what I have because everything is so expensive. And like, I just like slowly have invested in my, my gear. And for me, it was more a priority to buy a tent than it was to buy like a brand new back backpack. So I think that like, as you ease yourself in, you'll figure out the things that really, um, that you really need and that things that you feel like will help you to like have good experiences and that will help you out. But I also like recommend to like, see if you have friends that are doing these things and ask them if you can come along and experience it with them. 
Or if you have friends that maybe aren't doing these things, you can say, hey, is this something you might want to try to do? And like, maybe we can figure it out together. And like, you know, there are resources that resources out there that can like help you and guide you as you go along this journey. But I want people to know that like the outdoors is a place that you belong and that it's really beautiful and it has so much beautiful qualities and um, things that I think that people can really benefit from. So I don't want people to feel like it's not a space for them. And even if you feel like you don't like the outdoors, I think just, you know, try it out and see how, how it is. Because for me, I would have definitely have told you like, I did not think the outdoors was a space for me at all. Like I didn't think it was for me mainly because I also didn't see myself. We didn't talk about it, but I just thought like the, my idea of outdoors just seemed very like, I thought like, Oh, it's going to be bugs. And it's like, why would I want to be outside? And it's going to be dirty. Like, like, you know what I mean? Even though it is kind of like a mix of those things still, but it's so much different. And, um, it's just been so nice. And I, and I really have come to really appreciate it. So I never would have thought I would have liked it unless I tried it. So I think you have to try it out if you have the opportunity and see if you're going to like it. Cause you don't know until you try it and yeah, and just try to have fun, like go in there with a positive attitude. I think. I mean, you've got a beautiful Instagram account and you share, you know, lots of really educational and informative posts as well as like beautiful pictures and you're engaging with the community. And you shared a post a couple of weeks ago, which is basically about nature makes me feel. And I know that nature makes me feel sort of Mm -hmm. refreshed and recharged. And I'd love to hand that question back to you. You know, how does nature make you feel? And maybe if you could share one of those magical moments that's just you know, when you think back to it, it just makes you smile and it fills your heart with joy. So what you're referring to is a post that I created and I asked the community to let me know, like, what does nature make you feel? And then I basically like, um, highlighted what they had all mentioned. So for me, like now being asked that question, <laughs> no I, would say that, <laughs> I know, right. It's like, sometimes they put out questions and I'm like, Ooh, these are kind of tricky, but, um, I would say it really makes me feel alive. Like nature really makes me feel alive. It makes me feel at peace. There's so many times I've gone out feeling so stressed and just kind of like overwhelmed. And I go outside and I spend some time. There's a, there's a trail close to where I live and I just walk on that trail and I feel so good. And I've done it so many times, but yet every time it feels like it's it feels different. Like it doesn't feel like the same trail over and over. And it's like, you see something beautiful every single time. And you're like, wow, let me just stop and take a photo of this. I would say it's like definitely just something that makes me feel at peace and alive. And it just makes me feel so happy. So those are the words that I would say that like really resonate with me. And I think most recently I've developed this love for chasing waterfalls. That's what I call it. But, um, I've been traveling across the Northwest Territory specifically, just finding different waterfalls in the North, which are so beautiful. And that's really been something I find that really calms me. And I think there is something about waterfalls. I don't remember everything, but I think there's a scientific quality about it where it does really calm you down and just make you feel really like at ease and at peace. And I think lately, like whenever I'm, I chase a water, I find a waterfall and I, you know, I, I stand in front of it for a while. I just feel like everything is just like kind of washed away and I feel so calm and, and really good. And I think that like, that's just something like, if I think of like experiences recently, like this summer, just finding a bunch of waterfalls, I think I spent like a few days in a row, just like driving from one destination to another to find these waterfalls. And they're just so beautiful. And I think that the North has like such a nice charm to it. And yeah, it's definitely not a place that like everyone would want to live at or with like visits, but it's, it, there's something really charming about the North for sure. And Kristen, where's the best place for people to connect with you, to follow along with your personal ventures and to continue to see the work that you're doing with Amplify Outdoors? Where should they connect with you? Sure. So I have two different um, platforms. So my first one that I would say is Amplify Outdoors, which is like where I'm trying to really promote diversity outdoors and create more representation and inclusion. So you can follow me. I'm on Facebook with Amplify Outdoors and we're on Instagram and you can join our community there. I'm also, uh, I'm kind of slowly growing our Twitter, but, (laughs) but mainly I would say Instagram and Facebook are the main places and you can check us out on our website too if you want at www. 
amplify-outdoors.com. So that's where um, we have our merchandise available, but you can also um, follow along when we have events. We'll post them up on there. And you can also join our, our community newsletter where I'm sure to like really, you know, let you know what's going on with Amplify Outdoors as well. So if you want to check that out, that'd be awesome. And then if you want to follow me in my, subar- my subarctic adventures, you can follow me on Travel Adventures, which is, it's kind of an interesting play on words, but I spelt it as travel and then underscore adventure hers, H-E-R-S. Then that's on Facebook as well as on Instagram. So yeah, definitely two different perspectives, but uh, I would say interesting platforms for sure. You know, whatever you find resonates with you, definitely feel free to check out. Perfect. I'll make sure I add add all of the links in the social media so that people can follow along and that'll be at toughgirlchallenges.com. And Kristen, one of the things that we talked about at the very beginning was just almost, you know, dreams and plans for the future and what you want to do sort of personally and with Amplify Outdoors. And I'd love for you to listen back to this podcast in maybe three, four, five years time and see how far you've come on this journey. And where would you like to be in, you know, later on down the road in three, four, five years time? What sort of adventures and challenges do you think you will have done? And where do you think Amplify Outdoors will be? So let's see. It's hard because, you know, life has been very interesting for me, for sure. But I think when I think of like my personal adventures for myself, I want to explore Canada. I definitely have now this big appreciation for this country in a way that I didn't have before, just because I didn't have that exposure to the outdoors. I didn't realize just how beautiful this country is, you know, Growing up in the city, I thought, yeah, Toronto is really cool. And then there are other major cities as well that I would sometimes visit. But just not having that perspective of the outdoors has been, you know, like it limited me and my experiences. So now that I have this idea of like and I an appreciation for the outdoors, I want to travel across Canada. I want to do some really amazing adventures. Definitely want to go to the Yukon. I'm hoping that I can go to the Yukon territory. I think that'd be really amazing. And it's a territory that's close to us as well. And then I also want to just do some really cool backpacking across Ontario. There's some great trails that I'm hoping that I can uh, visit. And then I also want to travel in the U.S. There's amazing trails that I'm seeing. People are doing some really cool things right now, and they inspire me all the time, like I was saying. So hoping to um, to do that and go on to go on some really cool adventures in the U.S. And recently, I've started seeing some people in Scotland, and that's inspired me too. So I'm hoping that I can just do a lot of really cool adventures. But I think I'll start off in Canada and just really get to love and appreciate this country and see everything that's going on even more. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do in the near future. I will be going to Calgary soon, so that'll be really cool. And um, I will be doing visiting some really cool mountains. So, So I'm looking forward to that. And then in terms of Amplify Outdoors, I am so excited for Amplify Outdoors. I I love that the community is growing every single day. There's so many people that are finding out about us and like just so um, excited. And and I think it really makes them feel more like going outdoors and, and sharing their stories and getting other people excited about nature. So I'm really excited about growing the community. I'm really excited to have some events going on, to be honest. Um, and to just continue highlighting and profiling people. I think that's something that we're going to start doing a lot more is like profiling people um, and sharing their outdoor stories and continuing to grow our different collections and working with charities. I'm really hoping that like in the near future that we'll be able to have some funds available, like some awards and some scholarships, because that's something that I really want to do with Amplify Outdoors so that we can give back and say, okay, let's buy certain programs like let's buy equipment and gear for people that are participating in like 
programs that they may not have naturally, they may not have been able to like afford to participate in and things like that. So those are the things that I'm really excited about for Amplify Outdoors. It's been an interesting journey. So I'm really excited to look back and, and like you said, listen to this interview in four to five years from now and just see where we're at. Cause um, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting for sure. Well, Kristen, I have to say, it's going to be amazing to see what you get up to over the next couple of years and see what you do personally and also with Amplify Outdoors. And it will be amazing to get you back on the Tough Girl podcast, on the Tough Girl podcast extra to see what you've been up to. But thank you again for coming on the Tough Girl podcast and sharing more about your life and moving from the city to the subarctic and your passion for advocating for diversity and inclusion outdoors. You are doing an incredible job. And thank you so much for being on the Tough Girl podcast and telling us all about it. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me on. Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed the episode with Kristen, one absolute inspiration. My name is Sarah Williams. I'm the host of the Tough Girl podcast and the founder of Tough Girl Challenges, which is all about motivating and inspiring you while increasing the amount of female role models in the media. Everything that we have talked about today will be available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. Just want to share a little bit more information about our next two episodes that we have coming out. So on the 6th of January, we're going to be speaking with Leah Goldstein. She's the first female ever to win the overall solo division of the grueling race across America in its 39-year history. Leah was born in Canada, she conceived in Israel and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia by her new immigrant parents. Growing up in Richmond, British Columbia, she was the daughter of a boxer. Leah became involved in martial arts, taekwondo and kickboxing. After being told she should never fight again because she had a herniated herniated discs in her back, Leah won the Bantamweight World Kickboxing Championship at 17 against a 25-year-old fighter, a foot taller than she was. Leah felt a deep desire to serve her time in the Israeli army, which is a mandatory two years for women and three years for men. Leah knew that she wouldn't be satisfied with just being a soldier. She wanted to become the first woman ever to be an elite commando. She didn't just become an elite commando, she became a Krav Maga specialist and became the first female elite commando instructor. After leaving the army, Leah pursued a career as a professional cyclist in Europe and North America. And after a serious accident in 2005, Leah spent two and a half months in the hospital where she was informed by doctors that she would never race again, let alone walk without a cane. Leah proved them all wrong and came back stronger than ever before. She went on to win the women's solo division of Race Across America at Ram, the ultra endurance 3,000 mile 12 day single stage race in 2011, and coming in second in the women's division and overall fifth overall in 2019. She came back again in 2021 and at 52 years young made history by becoming the first female ever to win the overall solo division of Ram. It's an absolutely incredible episode jam-packed with information. Then on the 11th of January we're going to be speaking with Person Irresponsible. She's the author of Everything You Ever Taught Me, self-described as female, fat, funny, 40-something and in her fourth year of recovery from alcoholism. She walked 2,653 miles from Mexico Mexico to Canada on the Pacific Crest Trail. Now I have marked this episode as explicit as there's a tiny little bit of swearing in it and we're talking about addiction but we don't really talk in detail about that. I'm just going to read out a little bit more about what person irresponsible has written about herself. In 2020, the world went to hell in a handbag. This isn't exactly headline news, although it was then. I went from perfectly locatable in the Cotswolds to utterly baffled in the American wilderness when I embarked on a quest to walk from Mexico to Canada for reasons that escaped me. It was most probably nothing more than dramatic than a midlife crisis. Perhaps I should have come home, but I lived in the deluded optimism the pandemic would all be over by the summer. Besides, I'd given up my home, shoved my belongings into storage, persuaded somebody to look after my cat and someone else to look after my car. I did think about returning, but each time I popped into civilization to top up my supplies, I discovered a new reason to run for the hills. So home became a tent, a mere flimsy bit of fabric to protect me from every conceivable terror that exists in the wilderness. Bears, rattlesnakes, deserts, avalanches and other human beings. Most dangerous of all was the racket inside my mind. 
Everything you ever taught me is my journey, relying on nothing other than the 12 steps of recovery, teaching me to take it one day at a time, one step at a time, as I staggered my way along the Pacific Crest Trail. So new episodes of the Tough Girl podcast go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7am at UK time. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. The Tough Girl podcast is sponsorship and ad free thanks to the monthly financial support of patrons. You can support the mission to increase the amount of female role models in the media by visiting Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tough Girl podcast and subscribe. It's super quick and easy to do and it makes a massive difference. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed already and is supporting the work that I do. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, give it your all, give it 110%, get after it, go for it, believe in yourself because I believe in you. Take care, lots of love and I'll speak to you soon. 